Hey guys, beautiful sunny Texas day to talk about framing and we are just starting right here on our decking. We just have our first couple of uh, second floor deck boards down. I thought I'd take a minute to uh, tell you about some best practices on uh, decking and a few things that I've learned over the years. So first of all, your goal as a builder is always going to be a stiff floor without bounce and without callbacks from squeaks, right? We want to make sure that we're building houses that aren't going to have warranty callback issues because once someone moves in, puts all their stuff in to try and fix a squeak, uh, it not only looks bad on me, but it's a huge hassle and it's a pain. A couple things that you want to start with. Number one, let's look at my eye joist here. There's a bunch of different options for stiff floors. I like eye joists uh, because they're going to be traditionally much, much better than two by lever. So, you know, for many parts of the country, we still, we still see two by eight, two by 10 uh, floor joists. That can be helpful for height, especially if you've got uh, basements, you know, and, and full basements. The problem is there's not a lot of space for mechanicals and they're typically not as straight and not as stiff. With these man-made joists, what you're looking at here is a plywood uh, top cord. So you can see how it's plywood on the top cord. It's, uh, it's basically an LVL. The bottom cord, also an LVL, and then the center uh, webbing is OSB here. Now these happen to be uh, Boise Cassiade BCI joists. What that's gonna give you is a nice, flat, straight floor that has a really good uh, uh, rating for stiffness. They call that L over. Uh, and that's really important to get a nice stiff floor. Now when it comes to decking, there's a lot of options out there. In my production builder days, we used commodity OSB. We had a lot of problems with those floors, even when you had a, you know, let's say a three quarter floor that was glued down and screwed, still real bouncy, uh, a lot of squeak issues. About 10 years ago, no, more like, gosh, time flies, 15 years ago, I made a switch uh, to inch and an eighth. And at that time, uh, I just started my new company. Uh, engineer I was working with said, hey, this, this inch and an eighth plywood is totally the way to go. So we went to inch and an eighth plywood uh, on that very first build 15 years ago of mine when I was on my own as a builder. I had good success with stiffness. However, I had issues with rain during construction. And as a result, I had a bunch of swelling at the seams. It cost me a lot of money bringing a uh, grinder in, basically a hardwood floor grinder uh, to get that floor all the ground down at the seams and flat as I moved on to carpeting and hardwoods through the house. That's when somebody told me about this product. This is an upper end. This is definitely a more expensive product. Uh, these days I'm paying uh, around 40 some bucks a sheet for Advantech. This is made by Huber. Uh, they are certainly one of my show sponsors for years, but I've been using their product longer than I've been on YouTube even. Going on probably about 13, 14 years now. Now they make this in a three quarter product inch and eighth, they might even have a seven eighths product I think they sell in a few parts of the country. But what you're looking at here is a really high grade OSB. You know, this is this is not the commodity stuff that you're seeing at the uh, lumber yards. Very high grade OSB with, here's the other difference, polyurethane glues and kind of a waxy, uh, some kind of coating on the outside that makes it incredibly waterproof or water resistant, I should say so that we might have soaking floors here during construction. I'm still not gonna have any edge swell issues whatsoever. I've never had an Advantech floor with some swell issues. Now, how do we install it? Let's talk about that. You can see the guys here are using a foam, uh, looks like spray foam. And in fact, that's a all polyurethane glue. Uh, Huber makes this, but you can also get other varieties of all polyurethane glues. The nice thing about going with Huber is they'll actually give you a, a warranty uh, if you use their full system. And really the glue is what's bonding to the uh, to that top cord of the eye joist in my case. And you're getting a really, really strong bond. Now you don't want to use non-polyurethane glues. You know, for, for many years I used um, more standard adhesives. Um, and uh, in for standard OSB or plywood, that's fine. It'll bond to it, but your standard adhesives are not gonna bond uh, to this Advantech uh, subfloor. And my guess is, there's a few competitors these days to Advantech. My guess is those aren't gonna work on those either. Now what you see is we're, we're running the beads uh, really just for the area we're working. You don't wanna have 
uh, that glue all the way set down and then run, you know, 30 sheets of plywood. For us, we're actually doing really one, two sheets at a time. You probably could run enough uh, for 10 sheets though. I think the working time is around 20-ish minutes. Don't quote me on that. That could be slightly off. But uh, the idea is you're gonna be uh, running really just what you need in, in a short period of time so that you can uh, put that floor down. Now you notice we're nailing this, right? And for years, I always thought it was a giant no-no to nail our floors. But in fact, nailing works great when you've got a really heavy subfloor and a really good adhesive on here. Because ultimately what you're doing is you're clamping that, that uh, heavy subfloor down to the glue and to the joist. And the glue is what's doing the heavy lifting. That's why we're really serious about making sure we get a good bead of glue on there uh, before we get in. Um, so then the nails are less important. So we can actually save a little bit of money not having to go with screws now if you if you go with a three-quarter floor i got a lot of friends that swear by advantech three-quarter i think that's a good floor as well especially if you're going 16 inch on center but in that case you might consider screwing it you know the guys at fasten master make some really nice uh pan fast collated screws uh, that you can use as a stand-up and that's a great way to go uh, but uh for for us using inch and eighth like, 12, 13 years, 14 years I've been using it. I haven't had a single squeak and a single issue uh, with this floor. It's so heavy and stiff, it's a great way to go. All right, guys, that's, uh, that's a quick video today on uh, subfloors. Hopefully you learned something today. Post a comment if you've uh, been using this inch and an eighth and you've liked it. Uh, and if you haven't been, post a comment about what kind of floor system you like. I'm curious. It's interesting how different parts of the country have different floor systems that work for them. You also notice in a lot of my videos, I also uh, use open web 2x4 trusses a lot. Um, and those are a great system. They're a little bit more expensive. They're also a lot more open. But in this case, I don't have a lot of duct work in this floor system. I've got duct in an attic that's going up above here and an attic behind me uh, in this location. So in this case, really, I only have can lights. Um, and I do have one mini split ceiling cassette that's gonna get sunk up into this kitchen ceiling like right in there somewhere. Um, so I wasn't as worried about that. So we actually uh, saved a little bit of money using iJoyce. And it's interesting, in Texas, you see a lot of two by four trusses because we have no basements. We're running all our duct work through there or a lot of duct work through there. Other parts of the country, it's very common to see nothing but iJoyces and no two by four trusses. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed a, a little master class on subfloor from my real rebuild project. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.